Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. And I'm Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, as always, we're bringing you a, uh, the first of many games this week, including this fascinating new one with a new friend, an old friend, and some new material. But most importantly, Orchard North, so that's the old friend, sort of. Rang, who's fighting, and uh, what are they bringing for our amusement? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have Charles playing a 70th stone vision with balanced income. And on the right-hand side, we have Bird and Rory are playing the new 84th guard Strolkoli, Stroloki division, and he also has balanced income. So, and in, uh, yes, please. Oh yeah, in terms of like 84th, uh, this quick rundown, uh, Stroki DP spam. They got some IS-2s, but not much in terms of other tanks. So they do have KV-8s, which are like flamethrower KV runs, but they only have a 45 mil and like decent artillery and air power and whatnot. Yes, exactly. So what uh, can you tell us about the... You cut out, yeah, here. sorry. I'm sorry? You just cut out that part. Can you just repeat what you said? Oh, of course. I was going to say that... Um... This is, of course, only half of the new material. What are we going to see from the German side when and if that should come in this week? I had 25th Panzer and Panzer Grenadier. Not, not Panzers. They left the Panzers at home and only have the Grenadiers of the Panzers. But nonetheless, they're pretty much like 17th SS in a row uh, from SD-44. Just Stugs, uh, half-track infantry, artillery. That sort of infantry sort of style, but with Panzer Grenadiers. Certainly exciting. I'm actually ready for that, but I, I confess even more so. I'm excited to see the KV-8. This is the first time Eugene has brought this on board. Last time I saw this was Company of Heroes 2. Mm-hmm. I think there may be in, like, one, like, historical scenario, but that's really it. It's really good seeing them in multiplayer, because it's, uh, it's a really cool tank. It is. It is. It is certainly quite hefty. Now, how is this matchup going to go? 78th versus 84th. Obviously, we haven't seen the divisional matchup for everyone. Mm -hmm. how, how should it go up in theory? Well, 78th does have the STG spam. So the STGs have been nerfed in the recent patch by like like 40% accuracy instead of 50%. So we'll see how that plays out. But longer ranges, those stroke DPs are pretty scary. And it was IS-2s as well, so for Charles, it's going to be having to use his Pack 43s and Nash Horns to deal with those big, heavy tanks. But they're probably not going to come online until B or C phase. Now, uh, with that in mind as well, uh, I haven't asked the, the question I always ask. What's the air power look like for our new Soviet division? Uh, it's nothing really too crazy. They got some IL-237 mils and... Like some decent air aircraft here and there, but nothing, nothing really too much to write home about. I think I have pretty good AAO, which is nice. Now I, we are seeing um, a relatively, I would say, consistent opening from both sides. Uh, we actually have a ton of abusiers coming. Oh no, M two forty five. Okay, um, several artillery pieces going onto that central hilltop, little round top, developing right there in the Soviet lines at north central position, and a very early, you know. Tupolev, Tumolov, whatever the heck that, that company is, recon plane coming on in to get some eyes, which I think is always a great call. Mm-hmm, it's going to be seen all of those Shuchins and Sturm Shuchins as Charles tries to rush to that northern hill, which is probably a very good play. That's going to be perfect for his uh, STG infantry to just wreck absolute havoc. Indeed. Now, I think the thing's going to be amusing almost for me is that we have the Schlammenwerfer troop who's trying desperately to get to the front lines, and we have a Snapiri squad that's shooting at the motorbike, which I cannot help but feel is oddly very great escape-ish. Mm-hmm. Hopefully uh, there's no barbed dryer nearby. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'll, I'll keep that movie of trivia in the back of my pocket for right now, but if we have a lull in the action, I do want to share something about, apparently, the new Tarantino movie. Um, ME-109 going in after that scout plane, obviously going to be a very, very dead scout plane if you ever get a, a head-on going on with that. And very quick... That'll be soon enough. Um, and we have a very expected kind of opening. 1311, mm -hmm. lots of tanks to the north, but of, of course, the 78th has an absolute ridiculous amount of AT on its early infantry. Oh yeah, you got all the bloody Panzer Faust with your um, Shuchins, and then the AT grenades. And those KV-8s, they are pretty scary, of course, against infantry, they have flamethrowers, but, you know, you just sneak in a Panzer Strike squad or... Sneak in with a Panzerfaust, especially in this area. That, uh, that tank dies pretty quickly. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I was taking a look at the ranges just now. 160 um, meters on that KVA, almost at yards. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to speak in a much more, uh, you know, sophisticated talk, I think. <laughs> but we are going to see the Penta Vernichtungs kind of, I would say, playing backstop. Yeah, I guess. Sorry, go for it, please. Yeah, it's, it's a bit more on defensive. I, I do see some people rushing Panzer Sex Squads very aggressively early on, and it usually gets them killed. So having them behind your main troops is usually the best best way to go. Agreed. Now we are going to have an Ultima Cheeky and a Stormschützen going in next to each other here. Meeting engagement. Um, I know where my money is, but uh, I want to hear yours. I'm actually curious to see, because the accuracy nerf may give the Ultima Cheeky an actually running chance in this, and it definitely seems so. It does make sense, it's an SMG scrolled. Yeah, but the sheer amount of firepower... I think I have a minor issue with that. Now, they're moving in, of course, we're having a bit of an accuracy debuff because of that. KBA yeah, trying to get for yeah. close support. I do not think that's going to go well for them. Oh. And then the SCG scrolled still wins. And yeah, I mean... Yeah, SCGs are still good, guys. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and part of me wants to see the Flammenwerfer go up against the KB-8. Just nothing else to see one squad bellow to the other one. Come on, baby, let my fire. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but regardless, I think this early KV-8 play is going to get shut down pretty quickly. Yeah, we're seeing some strafing. Now, also, I want to know that yeah, strafing has been nerfed to quite a bit in mm -hmm. the recent patch. It just, it just completely redone the entire bloody thing. But still, uh, man's to scare the KV-8, and the other one is going to be pulling back, which is probably a smart move. Hmm. You know, when there's an airplane, there's a reason to be backing up. But um, that's pretty much where the major amount of action is coming across the map. We do have some more squads of guards coming into the center position. More Ultima Cheeky getting themselves set up for another, I think, push forwards. I don't know if I really like that particular position here. I would rather just keep the tanks and maybe to dispose the infantry to the south central to their town. What do you think? Uh, in terms of up north? Yes, so get those Ultima Cheeky squads, rush them down south. You see where the two, we have an Ultima oh, yeah. Cheeky and Guard squad yeah. in the Soviet town. I would stick them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're going to get ambushed along the raids, the Sturm Suchens, on a fantastic position. This entire northern sector is pretty much coming under charge control pretty quickly. It does have its SU-76, which I, I do like having it so close to the front line because it can use its own corrected shot efficiently. True. Now, we are going to see this poor Ultima Cheeky squad getting, uh, well, put into quite an enfilade of fire. Luckily for him, Charles very quickly throwing his own Sturmschutzen back. But we're, we have a danger of a pocket forming. Oh, yeah. It's very close. Very close. But I guess I do like this 37 mil being brought on into the north. If nothing else can be used very aggressively on keeping that infantry at bay. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, uh, and the killing, killing all the infantry coming in was definitely, or most of the infantry, is definitely a huge blow to Bird and Rory's front line. As those KV-8s, uh, they're pretty blind. You only have a command squad, or leader squad nearby to uh, be their eyes on. And all it has to take is, you know, one good AT grenade, one, two, one good Panzerfaust, and that flamethrower tank goes up in flames. And with it, all of their hopes and dreams. Mm-hmm. Now, we are going to see guard squads are beginning to shamble across the center position here. Going to be very, very optimistic positions in the far forest. And oh. I, I might be wrong here, but yes, getting more IG-18s is Charles, and he's bringing martyrs, both the northern and southern approaches. How do you feel about those? Uh, definitely an interesting choice. It's it's hard to use them in more closer quarter engagements, especially with KVH with uh, the short about not short barrel, but the smaller gun does shoot... A little bit faster compared to that pack 40 on the Marta 2. Or, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be definitely helpful later on when those IS-2s come online. Because at least you have a chance to do some damage with the APCR shells. Now, while uh, I was just discussing that with you, if you look at the southern side of the map, it is very blue indeed. Um, a sustained rush by a lot of Sturmschützen and Pigrens. Actually, no, excuse me, just regular Schützen and Sturmschützen. Um, I always look at that, that silhouette will always be peak runs to me. I know, it's, I know. It just, it still shoots a lot, but they're not, not Panda Grenadiers. 
And it looks like it's going to be slowly creating the Fortress Rodina over here for the Germans. IG-18 being poured into there. I imagine the Martyr is going to get set pretty far forwards. Yes, oh, yeah. on that southern approach. So I actually, I really like that play. I think Burden Dang. Warrior is uh, kind of missing an opportunity here. Yeah, I really do like getting a fire support up immediately. You know, those, you know, those are great fire support vehicles to have, especially on that hill of the high ground. Yeah, overall, Charles has been doing an absolute bang-up job so far in A-phase. He's got a two-point bleed on his opponent. He's pretty much playing it where it counts on the flanks of the infantry, because Trick do 78, you just run every single infantry engagement. Makes sense. In the meantime, though, we are going to see the KV-8 up north. One of them has actually already gone down. The second one might be, uh, needs to be a little bit uh, careful here. Might can see a second one getting killed pretty quick. Ooh. Yeah, the Panzer Strike Squad, he's getting in close. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna be a dead KV-8. Really dead KV-8. There's Sturm shooting coming in from behind. Oh boy. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty ironic getting in Cinderari in a flamethrower tank. Yeah, it's one of those moments you kind of think to yourself, wait a second, this isn't in the script. No, we're meant to be putting people on incendiaries, not yes. ourselves. Yes, exactly. And actually, you know what? With that in mind, geez, uh, Charles is very finely placing himself. Yeah, he's the side of infantry, now he's setting up more of the defensive structure to hold on. And now, it's just... Really good play. Yeah, I'm thinking once we hit B phase, Bird and Rory definitely will maybe you know, start hitting a little bit harder with some IS-2s, because those things are real bloody powerhouses, especially against 78, for they don't really have you know, heavy heavy tanks. It's just the Nash ones and Pack 43s. And with the HE guns on those IS-2s, you can do a lot of lovely infantry fire support against those rather scary Sturm shooting infantry. Even more interesting to me is that we have these IG-18s, though, on Charles' side, which I think, well, uh, kind of the band-aid that's going to keep this center more or less fairly unwounded. Mm-hmm. We've seen some T-34s down south. One of the IG-18s just got sniped as it was being brought up here yeah, by 45 mil. Oh, wow. And even some big leap pioneers coming in down south to try and help reinforce Charles' southern hill. Has really seen Apus from Bird and Roria. We've just some just some sapperies on an open field. Not going to get too far for IG-18 firing down on them. No, they won't. Um, can we also just acknowledge the brave Plumenwerfer in the center part of the field, <laughs> Frithman, who has held his you know held his nerve mm -hmm. and legitimately has just been crushing those guards as they came towards him. Yeah, real. I was going to say run man army, but it's, uh, it's two guys here. Two man army. Army of two. There we go. Well, brothers in arms. Mm-hmm. Brothers in flames. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. But our superior is kind of... Oh, wow. Actually, I, I kind of forgot that we have a plumb and buffer behind enemy lines there, but uh, that's oh, yeah. okay. It's chill. How's the guy being uh, shot by a sniper? He's probably just hiding in the ring mill right now, like... Don't poke your head out, snipers still here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, meanwhile, to the north, one Flamma Verfa squad desperately trying to push back those two superior squads, and that's not generally what you want to do. They have explosives, which, mm -hmm. um, not for nothing, tends to be a rather poor. How do I put this? A rather poor duel. I mean, I don't know. It's a, not a particularly fair fight, let's put it that way. Yeah, I, I don't like being hit by satra charges either. I don't think a lot of people would like having a satchel charge blow up an XCM now that I think about it. It'd probably be a rather unpleasant experience. True. Very true. Now we are going to see the IG-18s and the Pioneer Squad, excuse me, the Flamet Vipper Squad, are, have fallen, uh, which has put this back to a 13-11. Mm -hmm. But this for is... right now, we're doing okay. Yes, sir. This is just definitely a very good call here from Bird and Roya trying to push the centers. This is... This is rare, Charles. This is the weakest in terms of actual gameplay. His infantry aren't going to be as effective in the open ground. And in terms of his actual unit deployment, as he spent all his money on the flanks. 
That does sound like it's the case. We do have this T-34 who's been just trying to engage that mortar to the south. But if you see that nice little pyre right there to his east, that was once another main battle tank. You know, the IG-18. Oh, okay, so the IG-18 and the 76.2 were engaging each other. And uh, with the 76.2 gets by with a little help from his friends. <laughs> yeah, with, him, yeah. with him fallen, this uh, middle part of the field is rather open. Indeed it is, and all we have to do is re really what you do with 84th is you get the guard DP spam and you just walk over the open field and something pops out its head, so you got a bunch of guard DPs, you just shoot with your DPs. Indeed you can. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, the ZSU is actually, well, superior LPO is being brought on, and that's, that's kind of surprising. Oh, yeah. Not not for nothing. Do you have any idea what LPO stands for? Because like, I admit I have not a I think that's the name of the flamethrower. Oh, that would be Yeah, that's the name of the flamethrower. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely like the a very good counter to these nasty storm shooting in the forest. I believe these are actually, I believe these are actually a new unit for 84th now, I recall. The LPS. Yeah, because it's not like the... I was thinking, like, Sturmaviki LPO, which is two flamethrowers, but the Sapri LPO is only... It just replaces the actual charge for flamethrower, which is, you know, a good call. I, I definitely like flamethrowers. Now, shameful, dis them. shameful display. ME-109s come in, and it forces back a brave T-34E? What madness is this? <laughs> almost, almost on top of the hill, but... Yeah, that's just gonna buy Charles a little bit more time to get reinforcements here. Yeah. Down south though, the Sapri LPO is not meant to get in close to the flamethrowers, unfortunately. And those storm shootings are just gonna shoot you away. Uh, worth noting though that with that other LPO squad just outside, obvious uh, line of sight, still don't really want to be them. Yeah. Oof, and Pack 40 gets nuked by Yak. Well shot, sir. Well shot. Mm-hmm. Here we got some stuck in Armada being brought into middle to help reinforce Charles. It's starting to realize that his middle of the map is rather unexposed, and Bird and Roy has managed to take a few flags back, bring it to a much more reasonable 11-13. Yes, indeed. Now, yeah. ME109 looking to get some vengeance for his fallen comrades. But you're going over the CSU. That's rough. Uh, he's, he's, he's dead. He's, yeah, he's totally dead. dead. His only hope? Okay, I thought for somehow maybe he would have been able to have the IS-2. I don't see that happening, though. Ooh. Ooh. This is a really good person from Bird and Roy on the hill. He's got more of those Sapri LPOs and after Machiki. He's also on note Sapri LPOs of two machine guns. The regular Sapris only have run if I recall, so that's also a pretty awesome improvement. No, T-34 is under incendiary right now, so he's just lost a good amount of weaponry. Still, you know, technically a fair fight. Um, ooh, now the Stoke and the Martyr are both going to go right into these LPOs. This is going to be painful. Very painful. Yeah, the Martyr could probably definitely die to the Flamethrowers, but the, the Stugs... Stugs should be fine. That was dumb. Stugs <laughs> should be fine, but he's charging oh, in like... Oh, T-34. You are not Custer. Oh my gosh. And here's a dead stug. That was, that, was, that was silly. That was very silly from Charles. Yes, it was. Reuse of the T-34, yeah. Perfect, perfect position. Perfect timing. Ooh, That's but you know what? Hill. We have a gutsy T-34 who's going to discover that a Pack 40 beats him like a drum. Mm-hmm. Hasn't happened yet. It will, it will soon, though. Yeah, he just needs to move forward a little bit more and... Yeah, pack pack forty usually rings out sort of engagement. But we are back to twelve twelve with that happening. Mm-hmm. What do you think? How's it going so far for the eighty fourth? It's going pretty well. Just pushing this middle has definitely captured a lot of ground here from Bird and really his best bet now is to try and either hook down south or up north and try to like encircle one of his flanks. I think going up north would definitely work well if he tries to capture that town. As that, it seems always a little bit hard to capture the towns north and north. But, 
usually got the heals and fire support and strokey DP spam to help you out. Now, actually, I'm really kind of liking this, I'm not going to say perfect defense by Charles, but these Beglit pioneers coming in, taking out a good amount of that T-34 support, and he's very restrained as opposed to what he can do now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, without any infantry nearby, that T-34 is pretty much blind as a bat. And now we got some big league grenadiers being brought in to try and go into that forest. So, after the cheekies, might be to get, you know, a sneaky cheeky grenade kill on... Okay, no, the big league grenadiers are going to unload before they just rush down the road. Good good call, Charles. Good call. Good call. Also worth noting, down below, the Russians have managed to take back their side of the flags. Uh, which is not going to be too bueno for the Germans as of right now. A Yak actually just came in just to bombard that poor Sturmschutz and behind enemy lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, honestly, Bert and Roy's been using the C-34s pretty well so far. Yeah, that extra fire support to just having some medium tank on the field is def definitely helping him deal with these rather annoying 78 Sturm infantry, because you can't fight them run-on-run, -on -run, the 78 Sturm infantry. You gotta, you gotta bring in some friends to help you out. Preferably armored friends with many machine guns. Yes, well that's the thing. You could buy with a little help from your friends. So you mm -hmm. always gotta, gotta keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but down south, part of you wonders... Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. Part of you thought that maybe some other Sturmschützen could limp outside this forest and maybe pick up a T-34, which, you know, it, it's iffy. He might be oh, able yeah. to do it. It's a one-way trip, I can tell you that much. Yeah. Certainly see. And the Panzer Phoenix Tung's to the northeast of that. I'm surprised he's not going to try to take out a couple of these LPOs. Yeah, up north, things have been pretty, pretty quiet. I mean, yeah, Charles has set up a very lovely defensive position. He's trying to harass a bit to capture the barracks area. And, I mean, if he deals with a KV-8, he would pretty much get, yeah, I think... Where's that IS-2? He's been quiet. Okay, he's just kind of chilling. He's not really doing a whole lot. Yeah, he's been very reserved of it. I, I, I think that's probably a good idea, especially now that he's starting to lose uh, position on the hill down south as 78th is pouring all the infantry on that hill. But IS-2 is definitely going to force Charles to get some super heavy AT to deal with it. Indeed. By the way, we are back to a 12-12. The resurgent German push here T-34 cannot be close to those Bavarians, which is probably a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those Bavarians are definitely gonna... have just... Yeah, they got bloody AT grenades. They're just coming close, eat it at 100 meters, and... It's a, that's a dead T-34, and T-34's on the southern side of that hill. Or the, you know, lower side. Be a bit more precise, so... Be pretty easy to just sneak up on. But no, no, he's gonna back out. Just in the nick of time. Uh, Kolnaya Razvedka, what the heck are those things? Where are they? Center position, uh, in trucks headed to the front, the Studebakers. Um, I had a new recon unit. Yeah, it's, uh, 84 Fav. I got their loadout, but we'll, we'll see once they jump out of here. Lovely it's, American It's trucks. minimalistic. It's minimalistic. I think it's like a PPS or two. Yeah, yeah. I, what does, if anyone knows, what does... Konaya means. I know where Devka means recon, but I'd like to know what that word means. Konaya. Is that how you say that? I, I have no idea how to say it. How would you say it? Konaya? I don't know. In Konaya? Konaya. I, I don't know. Maybe it's Konaya. Who knows? Who knows? People in YouTube comments right now. Yes, but down south is a big infantry push. It does look like Burden warrior is like, you know what? I'm going to shift the burden of fighting to the south. He's oh, a yeah. cool opportunity warrior. Yeah, it's got the Strafniki spam being brought in, and you can never go wrong with Strafniki spam. Never. You can never go wrong. And he's just going to unload. Oh, no, he loses run to, to machine gun fire or SCG fire. But there they go. That's like 100 guys on the field now, or 80 to be more precise. And... Now that's three DPs of squad. You're, you're gonna win open ground engagements. Certainly hope to, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, we are gonna see three German vehicles being brought to the center, uh, but he's gotta get some infantry to the south. He's gonna get absolutely crushed if he doesn't. 
One of them is Nigel, Khan. Yes, indeed. So, uh, place your bets now. How long is he going to last? It, it, will he see... <laughs> will he see, um, let's say, the first non-sea phase? I say he's... He's probably going to die around about the 27 minute mark. Like, Club club 27. Club 27? Club. 27 Club? I'll take the Club 27. That works for me. Now, better yet, though, we're actually going to see some Nibelwurfers coming on in the Anun Fiatzig models. So, maybe with a little bit less boom than I want to. Uh, we actually, we have this mortar yeah. that's been up top for a hefty amount of time. I think Charles was just kind of said, Artillery, what's that? <laughs> and just let me go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who does need it? It's really interesting watching these replays, or 1v1 replays, because sometimes you see people use, hev like, both sides use artillery heavily, or it's just barely any at all. And for most of the match, this has been a non-artillery match. We've seen a few SU-76s, or, like, one SU-76 being used up north, but that's, that's really been it. And there's another one down south, but I haven't really seen much action from it. It's always, always interesting to see. I mean, the Konai are a pretty light loadout, by the way. It's just, like, two PPSHs, nine yeah. Mosins. It's just a beefy squad in terms of numbers. Yeah, which I find rather amusing. Um, mm -hmm. Part of me almost sees them as the, the Fusiliers. Yeah. Or the Freibeliger from the, the last game. Yeah, just... just not, not as cool. Not, not, not as cool. I, I prefer using smaller recon squads, personally, but that's just my taste. Well, it makes, it makes more historical sense, you know? You're not going to go and stick 30 guys. Like, okay, this is my recon platoon. <laughs> go, guys. Be sneaky. Tell me what you see, all mm -hmm. 70 men. Yeah, I mean, who'd send 100 guys to do a recon patrol? It's ri it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why'd you send four when you can send 40? Mm-hmm. Or well, 400. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, I heard that's actually the Battle of Thermopylae. It wasn't 300 Spartans to defend. It was 300 Spartans to scout. <laughs> but that's how that worked. Uh, in the meantime, though, we are going to see that the Germans have to be kind of careful. We have three squads of Sarafniki moving in. There's one squad of Schutzen. They are rushing more infantry into the area, but we've seen firsthand consistently how hard it is to dig out infantry that takes that, that position. Yeah. Yeah. They move up first, by the way. Uh, doing their thing. Freaking out troops, getting some people nice and freaked. Stress galore, but... Um, but all said and done, not really the biggest concern. Ooh, look east, the the, the Vinixtums. There's a oh. IS-2 coming up, so it's going to be a, an attempt at a cheeky-beaky <laughs> kill, and it's not going to get it, I don't think. That was a really awesome well, idea. How did Jack get Yeah. Oh, he's been there for like 15 minutes. Oh, okay, I thought maybe he just you know, teleported in from the sky. Speaking of sky, we've, got, we've seen a few of these Akron bombers be brought in, but haven't really done too much in terms of impact. Well, he's going after that rhino, so... Oh no. And, and and it's the hero, so will it, will it be 27? Club 27? Club 25? Nah. Nah. Oh. He has not yet begun to fight, he bellows, and goes back into the fray. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, to the south, the Russian push has stalled, but not for lack of trying. A couple no. of squads get picked up here and there. Uh, and the German infantry does get into play... Oh no, never mind. One by one, they're getting taken out by PTRD shots. Three squads all go down. <laughs> Yeesh. Yeesh, yeah. I, I really do like how he's moving through the forest. And now he's going to capture the barracks. Uh, and a nice uh, Strefniki wants to get into the, the barracks. They're so hard to dig out, man. Like, trying to kill a 20 man infantry squad takes forever. It, it just takes all the bloody time. And that's, that's what makes Strafniki such good infantry. Well, it's... that's why you don't, really, you don't really worry about taking back the territory. You destroy the territory, and then, you know, no building, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strafniki are like, like your tank class in World of Warcraft. And I'd say you have a healer, but not really. I guess DPS is artillery. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, he healers... Oh... Well, naval Verfers are your glass cannons. Yep. <laughs> Nash horns, too. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Almost literally glass cannons in that case. Yeah. PTRDs are doing their ridiculous work over here against those poor Stugs. Uh, engine destroyed on one of them. Considering he's not showing his backside, I have absolutely no idea how he was able to lose his engine, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. 
That's that's the thing about just AT rifles. Nice nice thing having them on a lot of Rust and Scrolls is they usually don't kill, but you can get some nice criticals, especially if you've got like a side shot or two. Indeed. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are gonna see Nigel is going to make it through that first twenty seven minute mark, so the over under is in. And unload your troops, thank you. I was going to say, unload your freaking troops. If you lose them, I'm going to be really, really quite put out. Uh, all, all, the, all the Charles' troops, who are Char German, have been completely surrounded down south. All sneaky Panzer Strike Squad here from Bird and Russian Panzer Strike Squad. Going to be killing... Never mind, doesn't kill the anti-aircraft PC. He blew his one shot. There's one opportunity. Yeah. Man. Man, oh man, oh man. Oh, T-34, what are you doing? Don't, don't do that. Don't rush in unsupported. I'm not sure where I'm looking. Oh, down south. Down oh, south, down yeah. south, yeah. Fire another grenade. There we go. Look at that. The German ones actually do work. Oh. Huh. I'm so used to seeing them having, like, awkward fuses that just don't happen to go off. There's the whole thing. Yeah, sometimes the Germans stick it on the wrong way. It's like, why is it not sticking, Khan? That's the handle, that's the handle, hands. Which is pretty impressive, considering they were magnet, mm -hmm. uh, magnetized, rather. Do you think that's something that you could, like, put on your fridge? I'd actually want one of those on my fridge. Um, de decommissioned, of course. Not I was going to say, no, no, it's actual. Right <laughs> JU-188 is going to plaster this T-34. Oh, God, yeah. So, so, sorry, just back to you, but just imagine someone, like, putting that on a fridge. It's like, yeah, oh, look at my new fridge ornament. Boom. Oh dear Christ, he just freaked out his own troops. Oh, the only one who wasn't freaked out was the freaking T-34. Oh yeah. I mean, this thing you gotta be careful with, with those carpet bombers is... They, they, they carpet a large area and that carpet can extend to your troops. Ooh, and although his death does herald the end of two Russian planes, the Ju-188 goes down. Mm -hmm. uh, worth noting as well, we're actually going to get a Soviet kind of... Uh, Russian Grupa. To the north, four squads of DPs, two T-34s, and I think they're getting prepped to try to take back this northern hillside. So Burden Warrior, learning from his earlier errors, and definitely working both sides of the map. And just in time, too. This, I would argue, he's lost the south. Yeah, he, um... Yeah, he pushed pretty hard, but the push didn't push all the way, unfortunately. So... Putting that pressure up and off is definitely going to be a smart call here from Burdened. Um, and two more Junkers coming on in. Mm -hmm. yeah, in terms of in terms of points, Burden Rory is still lower in terms of total score, but he is slowly bleeding Charles. Minor yes, plus is. one. And oh, yes, it was JU's. Oh my gosh, he's going to actually hammer this infantry. <sighs> 50 kgs, the artillery is dead. So is that infantry, or pretty close, I would I would argue. Wow. That was surprisingly underwhelming. Yeah. Uh, it fell a little bit too short, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we are, do I seem to have a bit of a Christmas truce between these big leap pioneers and this Konea Razvedka um, behind the front <laughs> line here? I wonder if it is... I think it's because of the hill, technically. Like, slightly lower elevation? No, no, no. Is Kanaya just really sneaky, I guess? I could not tell you for sure. What I can tell mm. you is that Charles is looking to take back the barracks. And while full strength Stradafniki squads are more than enough to hold the line, I don't know if a barely alive one will manage to, hit, you know, keep it in touch here. Yeah, especially with a lot of shooting when they're shooting at you. You're not going to hold out that, unfortunately. And that's going to bring it back to an even 12-12, giving Charles a bit more breathing room. And now both, both sides are still going pretty strong. I mean, they're both using balanced decks, so it should be more sea phase focus. And it feels like this is going to come down a bit more to a raw of attrition, which for both decks have pretty good attritional capabilities. You yeah, haven't really seen many ISUs really be brought out. We had the one down to the south. I have no idea what the hell happened to it. My guess is just a very, very unlucky exchange of firepower. Um, because Lord knows it wasn't that behind the lines, big leak grenadier. Yeah, it's, it probably went kaboom somewhere. 
probably very accurate. Uh, but the Soviets are very much losing the South. Uh, their infantry is broken and dismayed. And I don't think they have a ton of infantry. Yeah, they're going to get a couple of squads up, but it's going to be another 30 or 45 seconds. Yeah. That's that's asking an awful lot here. I'm not sure they can get there in time. Yeah, but yeah, this is a great counterpost here from Charles as he goes and, um... Yeah, let's just move up all the Sturm shoots and once, once again, with 78 Sturm, CQC, Forest, all of that, you, you win because of Sturm shoots and you don't have to worry about anything. Absolutely. Well, like Flamethrowers and Satchel Charges, but that's really it. You know, you were worried about the IS-2. If you look to the north, you are going to see the IS-2 and his T-34 compatriots are starting to shell the northern, oh. northern German position. Oh, they are. So what's being done about that? Well, not a hell of a lot, but we are going to see an off-map 210 uh, Schwimmenwagen being brought on in. So I would imagine the Germans are gearing themselves up for their own push as well. Mm -hmm. Another IS-2 coming on in. Hmm. Yeah, and it's definitely cool seeing some off-map being brought in. It has been buffed in the recent patches, as, or the current patch, as now it does more shots per barrage. So that's good. That's, that's very good. There's definitely a bit more reason to use off-map now. Which is such a weird thing to say because how terrible it was in SD44. By an SD2, it's kind of... meh. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy you agree with me. I'm always mm -hmm. nervous to make to voice that kind of opinion. It's rather unpopular, at least it was, I think, early on. Yeah. Um, by the way, more the south, more shoots into the north. These naval buffers are ready to go. I'm surprised he's not gone in barrage, especially to the south. They could put the entire Soviet southern flank to flight. Oh yeah, yeah, just shoot the barrage and then move in and cl you know, clear, the, clear the rest after the stamp shootings, because yeah, not much in terms of CQC infantry down south, even Bird and Rory, it's mainly just Refniki and Guard DPs, which are more open field troops. Well, I can also say that this is a all-in on the north. Pretty much his entire IS-2 cards are being applied to them. We've seen three yeah. in the last, like, two minutes. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of IS-2s, and hopefully it'll be enough. Is that for the fantastic infantry for support, the 50 cannon, the, the big HG cannon, for sure. It's just wherever he can get him into the right position. It's a pack 43 north of the northern town a little bit, but he's getting pounded by Soviet artillery, and there's the off-map coming in. And, uh, good lord. It's pretty devastating. Oh, it's beautiful to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, those extra shells definitely seems much more extra. Well, it just it makes more sense, you know. It, yeah. it seemed like the off-map barrage just seemed so anemic before. Yeah, yeah, it's a real shame. It's a real shame. But now that's that's good. That's good. I'm I'm very happy with the balance for off-map now. Uh, worth also noting that we are going to see that mortar, that 120 mil mortar, still in a truck. He's just still <laughs> chilling. <laughs> Come on, Charles, what are you, what are you doing? Wait, I think I think the mortar crews took a nap in, in the truck and they just don't want to rake up. And okay. Charles is too afraid to rake them up. No, they're too busy washing the tube. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, God. Yeah, well, yeah, that was what pretty can I say? Yeah. That was um, good. Germans are not looking to lose this south. They have seven more squads coming in, three shoots and three stump shoots and an officer. So, all of that, they're just burying the southern approaches in blue. Yeah. Um, just at the same time as their infantry up north is going to get plastered by another artillery barrage. Yikes. Ooh, wow, it's actually it's even hitting his own troops. And there's a friendly fire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now we're seeing the game develop a little bit more. In, in, I mean, this this match. I mean, we're starting to see a, quite a bit more in terms of artillery use now. Those SU 76s are pounds on the rain, of course. Charles using the off map artillery. And that's definitely going to slow down any advances, as, especially these infantry focused divisions, because it's, it's pretty easy to move an infantry compared to a moving tank. Pack 43, by the way, in the center, takes out an IS 2. Ooh. Uh, southeast of where we have our lone um, Flubbenfer for squad that has been there for 30 minutes. Oh, man. He's still like, is that sniper still here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Okay, let's just keep our heads down. Hopefully no one wants his strategically important windmill. Uh, Pack 43 to the north, also engaging another IS-2. 
I don't know. If I'm the IS-2s, I need to get out of there post-haste because I am not going to win a gunfight with a Pack 43. Yeah, you're you're just not going to. Those are Pack 43s. You're absolutely and another scary. kill. Jeez, that's that's a hefty loss right there. Yeah. And those layers uh, is pretty hard to replace those layers. You can get anywhere from really like six to nine, roughly. With with eighty fourth, depends on how you build your deck. So you don't want to be throwing them away like that. Ooh, I like the placement of this last artillery barrage. If he gets lucky and takes out the commander, that's going to be a hefty, Ooh, hefty amount of damage. That's a huge kill knocking out the commander if he does, yeah. And it's only a four man squad, so it's not unlikely. No, one unlucky shot here, and poof, you've just been promoted. Mm hmm. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, Charles, Charles is doing a very good job, and this is Tristan Warfare. He's got the infantry, he's. Slowing down the progress up and all for the good use for soft map artillery and the pack 43. I mean, there's not really much going in terms of, well, the burden wars has captured another flag. But Charles still okay. has a lot of bleed time. Supply has just died. Um, the officer is pinned down. The tanks are freaking out. And we're getting super close. I feel like it's just a whisker away. Oh, wow. A T-34 has been killed by it. Or they might have been the pack 43. Either way, this is the time. You attack now. Their army is just broken. IS-2 goes down. Jeez. Jeez. Uh, all of that died, but the commander lived. <laughs> well, because he was, he was protecting the rear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I had a gentleman's agreement with the artillery. Like, hey, like, try not to hit the enemy commanders. All right, we, we want to keep our... The officers alive. Just, well, just, just, from a, good just imagine the masses of men having at each other with no know. leaders. Yeah, they're very civilized on the Eastern Front. It was <laughs> very, it was a very clean <laughs> and nice war. Nothing, nothing bad went down. No, not in the Eastern. No, front. no, no. Of not. Nah, it's, every, everything was they were all hugged after afterwards. I'd stop scooping. They were exterminating actual rats. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know already, Einstein's group were extermination squads that went back and forth across... Fucking front. terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Absolutely like, mercilessness. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're joking about that, but fuck Einstein's group and what... Like, yeah. Terrible war crimes that was. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Returning to more, quote, serious yeah. moments. Uh, uh, we do have a couple of guard and Strathniki squads being pulled into the Soviet pocket to the south. That's kind of amusing to me. We have a uh, combat motorcycle we have an su-76 and we have a studebaker that's right there and i think those are the only things keeping i would say the soviet southern flank in any kind of good shape well, i find bizarre is he has two commanders in his deck yeah you never see it what weird the... isn't it what that well, is huh ooh, ooh, ooh. naval buffer barrage takes out an su-76 to the north and the pocket to the north gets weaker still this is getting, it's, this, I would say the situation is getting rather dire over here for the Soviets. I think, low. The yeah. Naval River Strike to the south, two to the south, going to be hammering that barracks. Probably going to be some friendly fire on that poor Sturmschutzen in the area, but just uh, see what happens. Yeah, it definitely, definitely feels like 78th is winning this war of attrition. I, I think it's really just coming down to the infantry engagements. And for 78th, you just, you just win the closer range infantry engagements, and Burden Roria is giving him such pleasure by, by moving his infantry a little bit too close. And his neighbor F is a bit, pretty much on point in suppressing Burden Roria's front line down south, getting some pretty good hits and all those guards and whatnot. Indeed. Maybe first though, they do crush that. We're back to a 12-12, and, and honestly, very lucky that it's not even more than that. Uh, 120's finally getting themselves into action. They're going to be pounding that factory complex, oh, and wow. I think just ready to go and squads out, and once that happens, that will be an Axis position. I was not going to lie, I was hoping that 120 never actually unloaded. Actually, is it the same ones? Yeah, it's... Uh, Schum yeah, Schumacher and Bremer, yeah. Yeah. 
But um, all of the artillery positions are being marked by the Soviets as these 105s are engaging from the absolute other side of the map. And I think the 120, yeah, Soviet 122 is going to be engaging in the other direction, as is this 203. Desperate counter battery fire being deployed. Yep, yep. Just, I, I think it's like an accretion with every single Steel Division match. Uh, once it eventually goes past like the 30 40 minute mark, it just comes down to artillery spam. It's, it's like the artillery equation. Doesn't matter what, doesn't matter when. By, by that time, everyone just buys the artillery. Well, it's, it's a Lancaster. It's a Lancaster loss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, if you're not familiar with him, is an absolutely fascinating bit of discovery. So I, I'm not going to ruin that right now in this particular cast. JU-188 is going to come in to just shellac whatever remains of the Soviet infantry. And uh, while this is Pavel's factory, I don't know how much longer this will be Pavel's. Another JU-188 to the north going after that position. I think this might be the end of that officer squad. No, he's going after he's going after the factory again. Interesting. Mm -hmm. but, but even though Buzz and Roy is like, losing his role of attrition, he's still bleeding Charles. Not he's, anymore. Not, not anymore. And he storm shoots in. Getting behind enemy lines, he's got to know where some of this artillery is be able to engage it pretty easily and he's got two storm shoots and squads up against one guard dp uh, i know where my money is and it ain't on the russians you don't yeah. bet on red in this situation you don't no you do not yeah Yeesh. yeah things are just not looking good for persian roria anymore i mean yeah that, that, down south the storm shoots and not just Leering through the or easy peasy like. But well, let's be fair. Yeah. We thought Burden Warrior was gonna be knocked out about eight minutes into this. He's pulled it back very well. Mm hmm He may want to get a bike command out of there ASAP, which is exactly what he's doing. Or was doing. You don't wanna have especially with a, with a bike, you just wanna get out of out of the firing zone and it's pretty close to being hit by artillery. Yes, he is. And the SU-76 is doing supremely close in firing. Mm-hmm. And good. while... What's his name? While that Soviet fighter was coming in to do a little bit of, let's call it, moderate strafing runs, gets picked off by an ME-109, so well done there. With that in mind, four strokes being brought on the field. This is how you know Charles has got to be feeling gutsy. Mm-hmm. When you're not that, investing in any infantry anymore. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Doesn't the southern front line look like a snake? The southern front line? The red kind of looks like a snake. I, sure. I, I guess I was looking more like a mouth with a tongue hanging out, because I'm dirtier. Mm -hmm. uh, but I could, I could see the snake. I could see yeah. it. Ugh. Oh, Schutzenfuhrer. Okay, so the IS-2, this is, okay. IS-2 dies, that's the end of the southern flank. It is, yeah, like, yeah, who cares much. about the SU-76? Pretty much. It is, that's a, Jesus Christ, this is a lot of infantry Charles has. Just looking at it down south, it's just platoons worth of angry German dudes. We've got, like, a platoon of stugs being brought in up north. Or middle, company. I should say. Company. company. Yeah, but that's the thing, though, is that, that they're they're not really using that infantry to their advantage. At this point, I'd be pinching and taking out this Guard TP squad. I'd be pushing those Sturmschutzen to kind of aggress into the IS-2. Can't see me if I go across the road, so I might as well. Yeah, yeah. But you know what, still, it is 1311. Can hardly fault Charles for just kind of playing a little more cautiously. He's definitely been behind the eight ball for a bit in this game. Mm-hmm. But right back to the north again. Yep, he loses the factory complex just because of that plucky Voizvod um, UPR squad. Leading from the front. Uh, what, more 105s being brought on in, so you're absolutely right. It is the artillery spam. Kind of think it would be quite that obvious, but you are correct, sir. And we've just seen some counter battery fire on the Russian artillery pieces in the middle, and they're getting some pretty good hits. That's the lovely thing of the German artillery, you got those correct job bonuses. Yes, and while you're not going to see a lot of mobility out of the German artillery, I think the bang more than makes up for it. Yeah. 
got a lot of a lot of bang. Got a lot of bucks too. True. Also very, very true. Mm-hmm. We're seeing a bit of a push in the middle now here from Charles. It's definitely the best play as this is now probably the more exposed part of Burden Royer's front line. And there's some pretty pretty juicy flags up to grabs here in the middle area. Like the Thalman River squad who will finally have allies again. I know, he's he's been there for bloody forty like forty five minutes now. He's he's just been in that windmill. Wait, alone. Russian Russian tube artillery to the north. Ooh, oh yeah, they got Katusha oh yeah, they got Katusha's, yeah. And doing a decent amount of damage, not a ton, mind you, but a decent amount. If nothing else, panicking people. Yeah, it's gonna shut up the artillery for a little bit, but not permanently, which is a bit of a shame for Erdund. But perhaps a rather darkly humorous posture here is we have that Stug platoon or company or whatever size that you might you actually you might have been right before. Uh, they just kind of start start to slowly amble on in and just start shelling everything. So I would imagine we're going to see this flag become blue once more. Yeah, but it's not really much in terms of AT in the middle here for Bird and Royer, so they're just some infantry fire support. Those thugs can move on through. Also worth noting, IS-2 to the south, gun is jammed. So he's got to get back quite a bit to even have a hope of repair, and I don't think that's going to happen. Oh no, there's a Studebaker coming in at long last to do that. Mm-hmm. I don't know, though. I kind of feel like the Soviets are, are somewhat on their last legs. Yeah, he's just kind of ran out of stuff at this point. I feel like he's drawn a bit more to artillery and whatnot, but it seems like he ran out of the infantry spam. And, yeah, just, just look at the map in terms of... The mini-map in terms of just, you know, blue versus red squares, and there's... I'm no mathematician, but it definitely seems like there's many more blue squares. Aren't you looking to go into coding? Kind of. Okay, I, I'm suddenly very nervous about the future of IT. I just use a calculator. Ah, uh, well that's true. Um, now we are going to see the southern LEFH is doing their work. Where's the other, okay. The other batteries to the north, where are they trying to engage? Interestingly to me, we're dropping a ton of smoke, so he's trying to take that town. Which, I first the first time I saw that, I was going to go almost like light of it, but this is actually, this is a brilliant maneuver. Yeah, I, I, I like it. It's going to allow him to get a foothold into the town, and there's really not much here. It's just one guard TP squad, and a, and a scary zoo, but there's a stug nearby which can help out with that. No, but the thing about zoos is that they're, 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 they have tons and tons of cages. Mmm. And, and animals. Indeed. Not really great for defense, though. There's a lot of holes in those bars. <laughs> uh, ZSU is not going to get picked up pretty quickly between getting shellacked by the anti-vehicle or even just some of the ground fire from some of the infantry. And it buys the farm pretty quickly. Jeez. Yeah, uh, Charles is really just mopping up the middle now. There's really not much yet to stop him. And he's, he, he's bringing even more shooting up north. There's so many, so much bloody infantry. A button more has got off map of his own. Dropping in some two or three millimeters up north here, and that should also kill those shootings or do some pretty heavy damage. Well, the question is, will they get hit by the first barrage, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Never mind. All right. Had they been hit by the first barrage at that point, it would have been game over, man. We have three more 105 howitzers coming from the central west. But there we go. Pinned down. That's better than being completely blown up. So. The town in the middle is pretty much completely collapsed now. Hey, there's great, great use of smoke and Charles is in that lovely plus two point advantage. Yeah, yeah, Bird and Rory has pretty much lost the match. You're an optimist. You say plus two. I say not minus two. But oh, yeah. Much. I always keep thinking of an SC raise where you're trying to gain points, but in SC2 you're trying to make your opponent lose points. No. If you want to go and take a long view of this map, it is oddly beautiful just to watch all these artillery contrails go in every direction. Oh, yeah. Really cool. Game looks great. We say it every time. But this game yep. looks bloody great. 
But it's, it's as true then as it is now. Mm hmm. Oh no, the ZSU is coming in towards the actual town. You poor, poor blind fool. He's, he's getting plucky. Get in there, friend. Get in there. What are you doing? Nope, never mind. Okay. But indeed, even the southern side, though, I'm surprised the Soviets have as much a grip as they do on this southern kind of ba uh, barracks area. Yeah. But they do have, it will die very quickly, but all the same. <coughs> yeah, they've managed to hold on just, just barely. Just, just barely. I think just having, I would say a fire support, but I really don't have really any fire support to need more on that hill. I, th I think it's really just down to the fact they got better long range infantry. And the off map artillery helps out a bit too. Yeah. That's a lot of tutus being brought in. I was even paying, I was just looking down to the south. Wow, yeah, so he might die, but he's gonna know where everything is at the end of it all. Mm-hmm. He he has just thrown yeah, this is this is how you know he's out of everything. It's he has no more investment for um you know, real infantry. Yep. Even bringing some IO-237 up north. Gonna be trying to do a strafing run or two, I guess. Is he trying to... Uh, is, he, is that guy... Oh, he was actually going after the anti-air. Oh my gosh, that's embarrassing. One's gonna get through. No, it's not. Oh no, he, he, lo he loses line of sight and completely misses. He's... Uh, I'd say he's gonna die, but this is an IO-2 we're talking about. Yeah, he, surprisingly beefy. Hey, you need like a surface to air missile to shoot him down, I swear. Now one final artillery barrage in the north looks like this would be enough to see the factory at long last, whatever the heck you want to call that, the barracks, in German hands? Yes, maybe? No, you gonna tease us with that? Alright, so never mind, we're gonna get teased. That could have thought that might have been a German position, but that will not be. Meanwhile, the Flotman River in the center part of the map will have been the, how do I call this, maybe the umpire for the entire match. <laughs> Literally slap bang in the middle, just just watching everything go. A true observer mm -hmm. to the fight. Same with the Sniper, they've just been, they have, they have an odd friendship between one another. Neither side has really done anything useful, but they've just been there. They've been, they've been with us this entire time, a true constant in our lives. And with that, Burden Warrior does surrender. Uh, and if you look at the KD, good lord, I didn't think it was quite that severe. But looking at oh, kills, wow. one T-34 distinguishes himself, a Stopniki doing it pretty well, but really a lot of the Soviet equipment is not supremely impressive. Now the reverse, though, one squad there, there's got to be a couple of standouts. No, there's not. For the most part, I think it's the death of the IS-2s which really kind of put that giant gap between them. Yeah, yeah, and I think it really just came down to just the infantry attrition, like I like I said before. As we saw once, Burden Royer wasn't being able to field a massive amount of infantry. He just he just lost. Yes, yes, very true. And you can tell the chronology too. First eight minutes. All German. Oh, yeah. And we do go back and forth for a bit, but then we have these short spurts where it's just like a ton of, of infantry or equipment for the Russians just goes down. And I guess that's that's uh, that's all she wrote, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Pretty much. Real, real good game, you know. Um, both sides and held in pretty long, but Charles held in just a little bit longer. Indeed he did. And folks, after that whole marathon of a game... Do get up, stretch a little bit, and check back in the next couple of days, I think, for another match. Um, if, of course, Ren, you have anything else to add? No. Well, folks, in that case, then, until next time, I'm Con Work. I'm Ren Roo. Take it easy.